Are you one of those people who think the universe is limitless? Well, you're probably wrong. Researchers have now found very simple proof that our universe must have a boundary. However, this does not mean that creation stops at this wall. What is behind it, and how this wall looks, we show you now. A universe from many systems and borders. Natural science is based quite simply on observation and logical conclusions. In addition, there is a bit of mathematics and experiments to solve the great mystery of whether or not the universe is finite. Researchers didn't even have to pick up a pen or use a computer. Just looking at what's obvious is all it takes. Buckle up, sit back, and relax as we take you on a journey through the cosmos. Our starting point is at the gates of the Milky Way, the galaxy that is our home. We see that our galaxy is a closed system that contains many other systems. The galaxy moves through the cosmos as a separate entity. It is 165,000 and 200,000 light years, respectively, to the two nearest and rather small galaxies, the small and large Magellanic clouds. The next larger galaxy, Andromeda, is a full 2.537 million light years away. But it's clear that even these galaxies are self-contained systems with a distinct boundary. Within galaxies, there are millions or billions of star systems, each forming a self-contained unit with a boundary and plenty of space to its nearest neighbors. In the universe known so far, there are very likely more than 500 billion galaxies. In the center of the Milky Way, we find a supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star. Black holes are mysterious phenomena that interact intensively with their environment and are very likely instrumental in the formation of galaxies. Black holes dance their very own dance in the cosmos. They can move, encounter, and merge with other black holes. We head directly into one of the outer spiral arms where our Earth is located. As we enter the solar system, we again find our own little cosmos within the cosmos in our sun and planets. If we look at the Earth, Venus, Mars, and an exoplanet within the Milky Way, these objects are also small worlds within a big one. On Earth, we experience a green and vital planet, whereas on other planets, ice or volcanism dominates, or you'll find worlds with methane-based ecosystems. Within these worlds, like ours, there are thousands of smaller other worlds. Think of a hive of bees, a colony of ants, or a settlement of microbes. Scientists do not formulate a clear boundary of our Earth, but nevertheless, it exists. The thermosphere is the end of the atmosphere of the planet, and also the magnetic field of the Earth ends at a certain height. Similarly, it behaves with all other planets, whereby their borderlines always show differences. Planets like Mars, for example, have no atmosphere. Nevertheless, their sphere of influence ends clearly measurable somewhere in the universe. If we fly to the end of the solar system, we will reach the end of the heliosphere at some point. The official end of the sphere of influence of our sun is the heliopause. Here, the speed of the solar wind drops abruptly from nearly 621,000 miles per hour. After a section where there is hardly any wind, our spacecraft enters the storms of interstellar space. Here, our spaceship jerks a bit. We have clearly flown over the boundary of the solar system. We look around again and see how the entire system is wrapped in a kind of protective skin of photons and other particles. A little later, we encounter a boundary of matter in the Oort cloud. Millions of asteroids and comets cavort all of them relics of the formation of the solar system. Our guide now informs us that we will soon accelerate to faster than light speed. Now we free fly through this huge space, and soon we will get to know the end of the universe. During the flight, we see a short presentation about the size of the universe. Our onboard professor of astronomy explains that we currently know of millions of galaxies. Our Milky Way, the Magellanic Clouds, the Andromeda Galaxy, and countless other galaxies are part of the local galaxy cluster. This, again, is a part of the Virgo supercluster. 
In further explanations, you'll learn about the biggest phenomena in space. You will see impressive images of the Sloan Great Wall, also known as the Great Wall of Sloan. It has a diameter of 1.38 billion light years, but is also only one entity with a clearly perceptible boundary in our known universe. Another remarkable structure, with a diameter of 10 billion light years, is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. Further, we see galaxy collisions, supernova explosions, and quasars. We experience that the universe, with all its structures and boundaries, is in constant motion. We are there. This was really an entertaining flight, and our captain announces the real destination of our journey. Since it's pitch dark at the end of the universe, large spotlights are activated. Otherwise, we would not be able to see what is now opening up in front of the panorama window of our spaceship. Everyone holds their breath. There it is, the great wall that is the end of our known universe. You see a slightly shimmering bulge. The border almost gives the impression that it's transparent or can be flown through easily after all. But our astronomy professor clarifies that the wall cannot be touched by matter and cannot be crossed. In the direct area of influence of the wall, there are extreme distortions of time and space. We have to keep a safe distance and admire the wall from far away. Despite the impossibility of approaching the border, researchers have already come up with several theories. Here is the paragraph without any skipped words and with the timestamps removed. About what is behind the wall, in fact, we now know with almost certainty that our universe is not the only one. If it were, there would be no need for a wall. The wall serves as protection and a border at the same time because behind it, a world presumably begins which follows completely different physical regularities than ours. Everything could be exactly reversed in this cosmos. Time runs backward, or matter exists only in its two-dimensional form. We cannot travel to worlds like this at present because we are bound to our physical bodies, and they would not survive these stark changes. Some researchers are sure that they have received messages from living beings from other dimensions. They tried to decode the messages and came to the conclusion that these life forms are made of consciousness rather than matter. Our scientists are sure that one day we will be able to travel to other dimensions as spiritualized beings. Many other universes. Evidence for the existence of other universes was found many years ago in the supervoids. There, conspicuous spots in the cosmic web provided evidence for traces of collisions with other universes. These patches are like cosmic scar tissue. The Adona Supervoid is a vast region of space where galaxies are few and far between. At about 1 billion light years, the void is almost the largest of its kind. In 2004, a group of researchers studied the distribution of galaxies in the universe. According to theories, the small number of galaxies and voids is due to the nature of the distribution of dark energy and dark matter or their gravitational effects. Within the voids, structures were noticed that looked like scar tissue in the fine cosmic filament. After some calculations, researchers came to the astonishing conclusion that their first impression had been exactly correct. Evidence was mounting that two universes had collided at this point. Presumably, these universes scraped past each other and hurt each other, similar to how galaxies merge. However, universes can also merge if they share similar physical structures. Quantum researchers even assume that there are invisible dimensions in our universe that also function like universes on their own. Our cosmos could not only function like a Russian doll with one inside the other, but also be crisscrossed and interconnected with other dimensions. Beyond the wall, it goes on. Let's go back to our impression of the big plasma wall around our universe. Nobody can cross this wall so far. Directly behind the wall, at first, gigantic spaces of nothingness can be present. But then it's improbable that in a creation in which smaller and smaller worlds are in the big ones, there is simply an end. Our universe is, with great probability, only one of many. 
just as our solar system and our galaxy are only one of many. To the universes, still larger structures could be superordinate endlessly and in dimensions which we can imagine only with great difficulty. Our entire known cosmos could be contained in a grain of sand lying on a beach in an unimaginably large world. Perhaps researchers from other dimensions see our sun, and Earth the way we follow the dance of electrons and protons. Now you may be saying, wait a minute, isn't there a boundary downward in subatomic space where all matter blurs into pure undefined potential? And then couldn't there be a limit upward? In a way, you're right. At the border of the Heisenberg uncertainty, our measuring techniques fail and the defined and therefore measurable particle state goes over into the no more measurable unstable wave state. But this does not mean that there is an end with creation. On the contrary, if particles go over into the wave state, they represent an almost inexhaustible potential. This threshold represents very probably also nothing else than a border into another dimension, or even into another universe. In these regions, researchers suspect still very little explored forms of the negative matter. With a little fantasy, we can imagine here entrances into mirror negative or parallel worlds in which completely different, slightly changed, or extended physical laws apply. As with us upwards, it behaves very probably quite similarly. Also here, there can be limits of the matter. Instead of matter, Superior worlds possibly consist of pure energy or forces and substances which we cannot imagine so far or otherwise, nothing but emptiness. Finally, let's clarify the question of how great the probability is that there is nothing behind the wall at the edge of the universe. These theories also exist. However, the findings of quantum physics speak against it. This branch of physics has recognized that the nothing and the emptiness in the universe basically do not exist. What we call physical nothingness is a place without measurable physical activity or the perfect balance of all forces. But at the same time, within this nothingness is the potential for everything, and very likely hiding within it are forms of energy and perhaps even matter with which we are as yet unfamiliar. So... It's very unlikely that there is an endless nothingness behind the borders of our universe. But how do you see it? Can you imagine infinity and an incredible variety of creation in several universes and dimensions? Or do you believe in the big nothing? 